and welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Alex Redmond. May is National Melanoma Awareness Month, and the American Academy of Dermatology designates the first Monday in May, Melanoma Monday, as a way to increase awareness and encourage early detection. Melanoma, also known as malignant melanoma, is the deadliest form of skin cancer, affecting more than 76,000 people in the United States per year, and those numbers have gone up, resulting in more than 9,000 deaths. Melanoma may begin in a mole, which is a skin melanoma, but it can also begin in other tissues, such as the eye or even the intestines, making it really hard to detect. Dr. Heidi Anderson of Dermatology and Oculoplastic Consultants in Sarasota will explain the warning signs of melanoma and answer your questions on how to protect your skin. She's trained in dermatology and pediatrics at the University of Cincinnati School of Medicine and specializes in family dermatology and therapeutic laser treatment. Welcome back, Dr. Anderson. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So why the rise in melanoma? Why so many people are Affected. We'd like to believe that we're detecting it earlier. Part of our campaign for Melanoma May Month is prevention and detection. So part of it's detection, thinner, earlier melanomas. Another part is what you and I and people who are older than us, it's catching up what we did in our teens. So if somebody went out there and they possibly burned, because I know I used to sunbathe, I, I used to put baby oil on, shh, don't tell anyone, mm -hmm. but I, I'd lie out there with my girlfriends and we'd, we'd get all bronzed, burned and then bronzed. Right. Um, could, could a skin cancer develop from something like that? And why is that? You know, we've, with genetics, we've been able to determine that 65% of melanomas come from ultraviolet damage. We also know that if you get a blistering sunburn, your risk for melanoma has doubled. Wow, that's incredible. It's, it's actually really scary. If you have a question that you would like to ask Dr. Anderson about melanoma or other forms of skin cancer, maybe you have a suspicious mark on your arm or maybe on your face and you want to ask her about how to detect that, it's a great time to call in, 361-4675. That's 361-4675. Pick up the phone. We'd love to hear from you. All right, can you explain what a melanoma is? Melanoma comes from a pigment cell called a melanocyte. And we normally regulate the growth of our cells, but if we have ultraviolet damage or a genetic issue, then these melanocytes don't grow anymore. They're not regulated. They overgrow and misbehave. Well, how do they grow? How do they develop? So they're embryologically just at the base of our cells, base of our skin, our epidermis. And then that's where they stay, and they produce pigment. We do have the capability of producing pigment to protect us. But if we overstress those cells, then they don't behave, they aren't regulated, they overproduce pigment. They no longer sit beautiful and together, but they actually get to large, dark, and bizarre and move away from where they're normally located in the skin. All right, our phone lines are open. Call 361-4675. 361-4675 because Dr. Heidi Anderson is here tonight and we are live. She's taking your calls and your questions. What, what are some of the warning signs that you can actually see? Maybe for our friends out there, they might be able to detect some of these things themselves. Trendy ways to remember melanoma warning signs, we say are the A, B, C, D, and E. When you look at a mole, so a pigmented spot, you want it to be round or oval. If it's asymmetric, we got a problem. The cells aren't growing uniformly. B is border. All right, well, we have an asymmetry picture right here. Is that a picture of how something might not Abs look completely round? You cut it in half, mm -hmm. the two sides are not the same. Mm -hmm. One side, those pigment cells are taken off. B, border. Border should be crisp and round mm -hmm. or oval, but sometimes they get scalloped, or we say even Mickey Mouse-eared in Florida. <laughs> C, color. The majority of melanomas are a dark, 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 black, overactive melanin. So, how, so would they go uh, on the next one, which is color, would that go to a, um, which you mentioned, would that go from a light beige and change to black or something? Oh, here we have, a, we have this picture. Uh, color where it, it's darker on the inside and is it always lighter on the outside? Um, not always, but this is a good representation. So melanoma can either 
start completely on its own, boom, you have a bad, black, dark, irregular mole, or you have a mole that's changing. We like to catch it changing. Now, can they sometimes be extremely small? Because I've mm. heard that melanomas can be as small as the point of a pen, like a little dot, and then as the years progress, it might change. At what point does it become a scary thing to where, or is it scary yeah. from the get-go? You need to get it checked. Very good point. If we move on to D, which is diameter, and then maybe show a picture of E, which well, is evolving. Well, we just brought D up, so let's talk about this one first. We've got diameter right here. Explain what we're seeing. So typically, mm. a mole, if you have it as a birthmark, it'll grow with you. But if you have something expanding, enlarging, evolving, so that's when our E's come in, that's when we get concerned. Right. So you can start as a speck, and then it's changing. All right, we're going to go ahead and take our first phone call. Right. We have Kim on the line, and after Kim, we'll show the other graphic. Hi, Kim. Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. What would you like to ask Dr. Heidi Anderson? Hi. Um, I was just diagnosed with, I guess it's, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's like a pre-melanoma. Um, I guess. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kim. Excuse me? Yeah, go and go ahead. And what, did you have a question about that? Yes. Um, with my job, I'm in and out of my car all day long. And um, I have tinted windows. But what's the chances of the sun going through my clothes? Should I be wearing, should I be spraying myself? Because they said that I'm at a higher risk now for developing melanoma because of these two these two things that came back and they said it's like a pre-cancer? Uh, thanks for sharing. When we talk about pre-cancerous or pre-melanoma, there's a whole category of moles that are atypical or dysplastic. This kind of goes with our talk about evolving, where you've got a mole changing before your eyes. It may not be a full melanoma. It may have some partial features of melanoma. If you have an atypical mole, we say if you have five or more dysplastic moles, you are at a higher risk for melanoma. So we go back to detection. I'm glad you got it detected. And we go back to prevent. Prevention, you're talking about UPF clothing, and I highly recommend it. Tinted windows maybe help about an SPF of four maximum. So the things that you can do, have sunscreen on, know how long your sunscreen lasts and reapply it, and absolutely, long sleeves, breathable material that has good UPF, so ultraviolet protection factor is important. All right, Kim, thank you for calling Local Doctors on Call. And if you have a question that you'd like to ask Dr. Heidi Anderson, we are talking about skin cancer. We're talking about malignant melanoma. Our phone number is 361-4675. 361-4675, pick up the phone, call in. And now we have Patricia on the line. Hi, Patricia. Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you. Uh, yes, I had a question about um, my skin. I've got a tan, but um, there are areas on my arms and um, legs where it looks like the uh, skin pigment is um, missing. It, it won't tan at all. It's just white. And I was wondering if that was anything to be concerned about. Not something to be concerned about, but it does show. There's a fancy term called pigment fatigue. Um, and the more and more you tan, so usually on your forearms, usually on your shins, the pigment, the melanocytes, they just fatigue and drop right out. So that it's best not to continue to get color because that leads to that contrast. But the white spots themselves are fine. All right, Patricia, thank you for your call. And if you'd like to call in, 361-4675. That's 361-4675. Let's go ahead and talk about what E stands for, because we were talking about the A, B, C, D. Now we're at E. E stands for evolving. The key thing is not elevation. When you talked about finding a speck, that's what you want to find it. You want to find a flat, dark, irregular mole. You don't want it to change. So tell us what we're seeing here on the uh, screen. What we're seeing here in the first picture is a small, dark, but uniform mole. That gradually the borders become irregular, it gradually enlarges, and then it darkens. And it is, unfortunately, a full-blown melanoma. And about over what kind of time would that time ah, Depends it on totally the person. depends. It's kind of it, it's kind of scary and unpredictable. Mm. Because cure rates at an earlier stage are so much higher. All right, let's go ahead and take our next phone call. We have Steve on the line. Hi, Steve. Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. What would you like to ask Dr. Anderson? My brother, who is uh, eight years older than me, 72, has just been detected with 
with melanoma, but internally. Um, obviously, not to be seen from the outside, being his younger brother, A, is it genetic, or, and B, um, is there any way of detection early? All right, did you hear his question? I'm going to repeat it for our, our friends out there in TV land, just in case they didn't hear it. We have a gentleman here. I believe that you said that your brother is 72, correct? Yeah. Okay, he's 72, and he has an internal me melanoma. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the question that you wanted to know is, is it genetic? And what was the second part of that question, sir? Uh, is there any way of detecting it early? And is there a way of detecting that internal melanoma early? Thank you. Great questions. Steve, usually most melanomas do come from a primary spot on the skin. So there is a concern that there may have been a primary spot on the skin. Sometimes the skin's immune system gets so angered by that initial melanoma that it resolves on the skin but does become metastatic internally. Melanoma can go to bone and to brain internally. The act about genetics, for gentlemen over 50, it is mostly environmental. There are a few associations, if you're concerned a little bit about for your risk, there are some associations genetically where you could be at a little bit of a higher risk, but what's more important is kind of the environment that you guys shared when you were in your teens and 20s and also your skin type. But I'm sorry to hear about your brother's diagnosis. All right, thank you for your phone call. And tonight we have Dr. Heidi Anderson of Dermatology and Oculoplastic Consultants answering your questions live. If you'd like to call in to the show, we'd love to hear from you. 361-4675. That's 361-4675. And we have Olga. Hi, Olga. Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hi. Um, I was diagnosed with keratosis, and um, they were... Um, uh, gave me a cream called Carac, and I kind of took care of that. And uh, I need to know, how do they detect the rest in my body? I know they have a light that they can go through and detect the next, like on your back or the rest of your body. How can I find a doctor who does that? Olga, do you mind repeating what you were diagnosed with for me? Keratosis, I think it's called. Keratosis. Keratosis. Um, so keratosis means scaliness, and there are two types of keratoses typically. Um, one is completely benign, a seborrheic keratosis that's genetic. We say age, or I like to say wisdom spots because I'm going to make them. Um, the other type is actinic. Actinic keratosis is derived from the sun. When you talked about a light, I actually have something that we typically use when we're doing skin exams. It does have a light, and it does have a magnifier to it. And it actually allows us to see much better on the skin these pre-cancerous lesions that you're hopefully probably talking about. All right, thank you for your call. And if you'd like to reach out also to Dr. Heidi Anderson, you may go ahead and reach her at 925-DOCS. That's the phone number, 925-3627. And now we have another phone call. We have Rhonda on the line. Hi, Rhonda. Welcome to the show. Go ahead with your question. Yes, um, I wanted to know if a child has like a small melanoma uh, and it's removed, how, you know, and, and he's been clean for five years, but how likely is that to occur in adulthood? Or there's no way of knowing. It's a great statistic to be clear for five years. That's one thing. Um, a lot of statistics do show that once you've had a melanoma, you are nine times more likely somewhere down the road. The only hope though, and I'm pretty confident that when that child was diagnosed with melanoma, that the environmental factors like sun exposure and sunburns probably were decreased remarkably. The child was probably protected. So the environmental risks have been decreased. Early melanoma does have a little bit more of a genetic factor, so there is a greater risk and continued um, examination is important. All right, thank you for your phone call. And if you'd like to call into the show, our number is 361 Four six seven five three six one four six seven five, and we will take your questions right after the break. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. What if you could see your kids get home safely without actually being there, or turn your lights on from somewhere else? 
Introducing Xfinity Home from Comcast, your total home security and home control solution, combining professional monitoring with rapid response in an emergency. Plus, text and email alerts, remote alarm and light controls, and remote video monitoring, giving you peace of mind whether you're at home or not. For a limited time, get Xfinity Home with free installation and activation. A $500 savings. Call 1-800-XFINITY. Hey, hey, you on the line? Yeah, man. Sounds like you're right here. That's what I call Xfinity Voice. No more dropped calls, no more dead cell batteries. Between you and me, I don't plan on coming to the office anymore. <laughs> With call clarity this good, Bozo the boss will never know the difference. Wrong number. Switch to Xfinity Voice from Comcast and get the reliability and safety of a home phone for less than the phone company. Sign up for $14.99 a month for six months. Call 855-215-BEST today. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Alex Redmond, and we are talking about malignant melanoma and other forms of skin cancer and how you can help protect yourself and what you can do about it if you do have a diagnosis. We're going to go ahead and take our first phone call in this part of the show, and we have Eunice on the line. Hi, Eunice. Go ahead with your question. We'd love to hear it. Oh, good evening. Um, I was just wondering, what is the treatment for melanoma? Eunice, it really depends on what stage of diagnosis the melanoma has been discovered at. If it's a thin melanoma, and we talk about thin melanoma, we're talking less than 0.76 millimeters, so less than the thickness of a dime. Thin melanoma, so melanoma in the skin or in situ, we can remove it with surgery. If it gets thicker and deeper, we can still do surgery at the site, but we also have to look at lymph node involvement if it's spread away from the skin, and we have chemotherapy drugs, and hopefully down the line, we have melanoma vaccinations. So there's a lot of good research for thicker, more devastating melanoma. All right, thank you for your phone call. And if you have a question that you would like to ask Dr. Heidi Anderson, it is a great time. Take the opportunity to take control of your health and find out what you can do about malignant melanoma. The number is 361-4675. That's 361-4675. And we have Marianne on the line. Hi, welcome to the show. Go ahead with your question. Okay, hi, thank you for taking my question. And um, my friend was uh, diagnosed with melanoma and has had a couple of bouts with it. Um, his dermatologist recommended vitamin D3 and is there a value to this um, supplement, taking the supplement, and if so, what is the value of it? Thank you. The skin makes vitamin D3. So if someone has had multiple melanomas or skin cancer or has a very fair skin type, we actually ask them to refrain from sun as much as possible. So then we don't give the body, the skin, the ability to make vitamin D3. We need vitamin D3 actually as a great antioxidant for cancer protection as well as for the density of the bone. It allows calcium and magnesium to work better. So we probably need to supplement, especially if we're protecting because we've had a history of melanoma. All right, thank you for your phone call. And our phone lines are clear, so take the great opportunity right now to call 361-4675. That's 361-4675 with your questions about skin cancers, detection, and malignant melanoma, which is, of course, the most serious of all the skin cancers. So you were talking a little bit before about genetics and we're talking about in the family and age. Why, why is it that young people just don't seem to be scared of lying out in the sun? We go to the beach and we see kids lying there, they're playing volleyball, their skin's exposed. At what point do we start badgering our kids to take care of themselves. How <laughs> if you ask my kids, <laughs> which are seven and ten, they're really taking care of their skin ever since they're young. Um, the benefit of living in Florida, year-round sports, so you can do a lot of prevention with the right clothing. The, the aspect, and it's hard, there is actually a psychological addiction to being tan. They've tried to do plenty of studies, People feel that it looks good and they feel that they feel better when they're tan. So you're really trying to break through invincibility, the social media. I think pale is beautiful. 
Yeah, peer pressure for the yeah. kids too though. You know, peer pressure. And the thing is that if you were to show somebody a diagram, I suppose, of how they would look years down the road mm -hmm. with that kind of exposure, it might be pretty bad, right? There are some fantastic ways to show them how leathery and unfortunate, not to mention surgical scars, that can result. Yes. It should be mandatory in school. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to take the, the call from Joan. Hi, Joan. Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. Go ahead with your question for Dr. Anderson. Hi. Um, my husband, who is 70 now, was diagnosed with... Uh, melanoma in his left arm, and he's been an elfman um, in the car for 30 years, and that's probably why he ended up with a melanoma. Um, there is no UV protection on the side windows of a car, only in the front windows. So now we live in Florida, and he is a golfer, and now he wears some sort of a cotton long sleeve shirt underneath his short sleeve shirt when he goes out and plays golf, but I'm wondering if he's purchasing a long sleeve golf shirt that has a little bit more of a UV protection than just this cotton shirt, on top of which, of course, he puts on a 50 or 80 sunscreen underneath that would be a better option for him. A few points. There are UV sleeves. I know, particular in town, I send a lot of my patients to the New Balance stores. I've started to include UV sleeves. So golfers and tennis players can wear those. They're breathable material, but they have this higher UPF, ultraviolet protection. So not just a simple t-shirt will do the job. The other things are, there are great shirts that are long sleeve. You can check the UPF rating. The highest is 50. And you're absolutely correct. People, the left side of the face look, typically has more sun damage. And I'm not surprised. Unfortunate, but I'm not surprised. The left side of the forearm hanging out of the car cumulatively gets a lot more ultraviolet light. All right. Thank you for your phone call. And Wayne is on the line. Hi, Wayne. Go ahead with your question. Hi. Um, I'm a veteran, and I have been at the VA hospital and had some treatment done there. And I've noticed some... Uh, marks that were on the side of my face and on my ear lobes and on the top of my ear. Uh, and in some of the treatment they did, uh, that's why I'm curious about certain treatments. Um, I, of course, I'm not watching what they were doing, but it appeared as though they were freezing uh, some of these uh, marks that they found on my face, which appeared to be like, a, you know, a, they froze it, it appeared to be, and, and eventually it turned to a scab or so forth. And it stayed there for a couple of weeks. Uh, can you elaborate as to what type of treatment that was, and, and should I be concerned about it coming back, or what should I be looking for? The treatment is called cryotherapy. Cryo means cold, and it's actually liquid nitrogen. And therapy, even though it stings and burns, sometimes therapies sting and burn. So I know that's difficult to get over. But cryotherapy is used for precancerous lesions, actinic keratoses, which we talked about a little bit earlier. These precancerous lesions are in sun-exposed areas, so your cheeks, ear lobes, top of the ears. They're red, rough, dry, occasionally sensitive. Uh, I've only had one so far, and I froze it on myself as well. There's different ways to treat actinic keratoses. Once you have them, you are at a little bit of a higher risk, so you can be involved in looking for red, scaly, thin growths in those ultraviolet exposed areas. Thank you for your call. And our phone lines are open now. If you'd like to call in with your questions for Dr. Heidi Anderson, she'd love to take your calls, 361-4675. That's 361-4675. And the topic tonight, your skin, skin cancers, and malignant melanoma. Let's talk about the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. the mortality rate. So the worst case scenario for melanoma is that although it's only 5% of skin cancers, it comprises 75% of the deaths of skin cancer. Early detection, you know, the, the resolution is probably about 91%. But when melanoma leaves the skin, the mortality rate, unfortunately, the death rate can go upwards of to almost 15%. It is honestly watching any patient go through melanoma, um, um, some that I did in training, they, um, they're uncomfortable and it is a really quick and devastating disease, unfortunately.
All right. And if you'd like to call in with your with your questions for Dr. Anderson, 361-4675. That's 361-4675. And we have Anne on the line. Hi, Anne. Thanks for calling the show. Go ahead with your question for Dr. Anderson. Hi, Dr. Anderson. I've had multiple skin cancers and actinic keratosis, and um, I do have a rough scaly patch now that is like a sore that won't heal, and I've had it a long time. Could that be an actinic keratosis? It's just red, and it'll try to form a scab, and then um, it'll come off, and so it's always kind of raw. And The non-healing aspect to it does set up red flags. It's a little bit more alarming. Actinic keratosis can turn into squamous cells, thin but squamous cell skin cancers, and it absolutely sounds like something that should be checked out. All right, thank you for your phone call. And tonight we are discussing malignant melanoma and what you can do about it. Actually, I think I'm coming in to see you because I have a little, um, so if you guys see me and I have a little make a makeup on my lip, I've probably gone in to see Dr. Heidi Anderson and she's probably taken something <laughs> off of me. But um, for people to, ex what should they expect if they're coming in and they're diagnosed with something, say actinic keratosis, which is what this last caller mm -hmm. had? Um, Precancerous lesions, we have different ways to treat them. The most common way is the cryotherapy that we spoke about. Um, if someone just has a few precancerous lesions, you get counsel, you get education, and you get your treatment. If we have a whole field, a forehead, cheeks, or scalp for gentlemen, arms or hands, then we have other treatment modalities like chemotherapy creams. We also, especially in our office, have something called blue light or photodynamic therapy. These tools allow us to treat what's visible and also to take a preventative action against precancerous lesions. All right, so don't be afraid. Go in, get checked, get it taken care of because before it becomes more serious. We're going to take our last call. We're going to take Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Go ahead with your question. Hi, I have a question about um, tanning. They say tanning is safer and it's you know not as dangerous as being out and sunbathing. Is that true? No. So thanks for asking that question. I will, for my patients that need and want to feel tan, I go all out recommending bronzers and self-tanners. Tanning beds actually by the World Health Organization is considered a carcinogen, cancer causing. Some tanning bed light bulbs get 12 times stronger than the UVA that we're exposed to here in Florida. Um, so I very much appreciate that you asked that question and I can dispel that myth. Another quick thing, since today was Melanoma Monday, I know every Monday throughout the month in my office, we actually do free skin exams for under and un uninsured. We also wrap up with the last Friday before Memorial Day. It's called Don't Fry, F-R-Y Day. So I know our, our office and many other dermatologists are really trying to make sure that we make the most of May and melanoma awareness. All right, thank you for your phone call. And thanks for asking the question about tanning because we've seen things even very recently on our local news about uh, people that just go into the uh, suntan bed and they're very, very dark and very tanned. And, you know, I, I believe they called it tanorexia. So yes. there you go. <laughs> All right, well, we'd like to thank Dr. Anderson again for being on the show and for giving out a wealth of information. And you can go by her office and pick up one of these little bracelets here for awareness. And we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your very busy day to spend it with us at Local Doctors on Call. So we'll see you next time. And remember, it's your health.